Welcome to the MRI Cast. These podcasts focus on various current topics in MRI. We invite you to ask questions via the website and even suggest topics for future MRI casts. The opinions expressed in these podcasts are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect standards in clinical practices, nor should they be considered as medical advice. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this edition of MRI Cast. I'm Bill Faulkner. And this episode is sponsored by Northwest Imaging Forums, William Faulkner and Associates, and Pulse Radiology. My co-host for today's MRI Cast is Kristen Harrington. Hello, Kristen. Hello, everybody. And our guest today is Neil Huber. Welcome, Neil. Guys, thanks so much for having me, Bill, Kristen. Thanks again. Uh, Look forward to chatting today. Oh, thanks. We appreciate you being here with us. So to get us started, I'd like Neil to introduce himself and tell us a little bit about your career path, uh, you know, the, the short version of it, if you will, and your current venture, specifically your current venture, Pulse Radiology. Absolutely. Well, guys, again, thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to always, you know, get with you guys and talk with you, you know, about our trade. And uh, just again, thanks for the invite. So um, just a little briefer about myself, uh, Neil Huber, founder and CEO of Pulse Radiology Education and uh, campus president of Pulse Radiology Institute, uh, currently based in Florida. Uh, I'm working from New York currently today. Uh, But my background in radiology is a funny one. So You know, when I was in high school, I was playing basketball and a big basketball guy and found out that I had kidney problems and I would always be in the hospitals and whatnot and just kind of felt, you know, like it was a place where I felt comfortable, believe it or not. Um, So, you know, as I left school, my high school, I went to college and noticed that they had a x-ray, you know, program there and ended up getting a full scholarship and kind of everything just aligned perfectly. So I think, uh, you know, radiology is, you know, from the get go is just something that always interests me. And, uh, you know, once I graduated school, I jumped, you know, luckily and thankfully right into MRI and learned, uh, you know, really from day one. So around those times, there were no, you know, structured programs. It's sort of like, hey, do you know someone that can get you in to do some clinical cases? And, you know, uh, here's, you know, a book that you can go ahead and read and, you know, study for the registry. So, you know, my theory was always to essentially create something that was a robust product that techs, you know, my colleagues, you know, around the nation can essentially um, study from a distance without having to take time off from work and then, you know, train locally, similar to like the Starbucks uh, business model of, you know, being able to go to an imaging center on every single street corner. So that's essentially how uh, Pulse Radiology started, how I got my entry into radiology. And, um, you know, it's just, just something that I love to do, I live and breathe it every day. And here we are today talking about it together. That's great. If, you know, the, you're uh, talking about getting into x-ray is uh, funny. My, my, my uh, entrance into x-ray was graduating high school in, in uh, 1973, you know, comments from Kristen. Yeah, that's the year I was born. Yeah, right. Okay. So anyway, uh, really about 1972, uh, 73, really, for that matter, I had no clue what I wanted to do. Uh, Growing up, I kind of always wanted to be a doctor. And then I found out you had back then you had to take Latin and I had to cheat to get a D in Latin. I thought, well, I guess I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do medicine. So I um, didn't know what to do. And this guy from a local community college came and gave a presentation on on the health careers. And as I recall, there were three of them, orthopedic assistant, uh, the rad tech and dental assistant. And so uh, I'm sitting there listening to him. And then this was now, keep in mind, this is 1973, 273. And uh, I said to the guy, so how much does an x-ray tech make? I mean, I had no idea what an x-ray tech did. For all, I, I thought they looked at x-rays and stuff like that. And, you know, I don't know. I said, so how much does an x-ray tech make? And he says, well, around 16000 a year. Now, anybody from back that age will, will know that $16,000 annual salary in 1973 was a big honking annual salary. Was, you know. And turns out the guy didn't know what he was talking about, Um it was more like $9,000 when, when I got into it. And in fact, my first job out of x-ray training was two ninety dollars an hour. Okay. It's, it's an x-ray tech. And um, anyway, it, it, 
you didn't make money back then. But I really liked it. Really, really liked it. My parents were surprised that I actually did good in it because I liked it. And um, and then going fast forward to like 1980, uh, uh, 1985, the radiologists were building the first image, were building an imaging center in Chattanooga that was going to have the first MRI. And I uh, was taking a stack of films into Dr. Jim Crawley's office. And uh, for those of you who remember the days, a stack of films. And I dropped them on his desk. And, and he said, hey, Bill, you hear we're uh, building an imaging center. We're going to put an MRI in it. And I said, yes, sir. I'd like to run that for you. He said, you would? And he said, I said, yeah. And he said, okay, you got it. So that was my job interview for MRI. And the radiologist sent me to a, sent me to a school uh, in California, and it was a MR program for technologists by technologists, and that's kind of where I got the idea and the bug that man, I'd like to do some, uh, you know, some education programs, and it's just kind of, kind of rolled along ever since. Kristen, what, what's your kind of that's awesome. sob story? <laughs> I was about to say I don't think I can I can I can't compete with the two of you. Um, <laughs> I was at UGA partying as a biology major, and um, my mom said, you've got to do something with your life. And um, <laughs> I was on like a two-year vacation. I was making, you know, a 3.0, but I, I really was going nowhere in life. Um, so um, she had been in the hospital a good bit at Emory, and she said, why don't you go to x-ray school? And I can't believe, Bill, you're, you don't even, won't even know this. I, I was like, okay. And so my sister, <laughs> okay, I'm just, I'm just being cathartic here. My sister um, actually applied for me and I went for the interview and I got in and I, um, the first day I really didn't even know what an x-ray was. Um, I promise you, I had no clue, but um, I knew I was in a two-year program and I actually ended up graduating with, um, with honors. And while I was in the program, I, um, was broke. So I told mammography, x-ray and MRI, you're my favorite modality. Um, I love all of you. And, um, MRI offered me a job a day before mammo did, or else I'd be speaking on breasts constantly. Um, because I love education. So I became an, uh, I became just like a patient care, you know, I was just help downstairs in the MR department because we were in the basement back then at Emory. And as soon as I graduated, they hired me as a tech. And so I was on the job uh, learning and I wanted to know more. And so in order, they kind of created a bachelor's degree for me. And I took actually Dr. Perry Sprawl's, Sprawl's um, fellowship course um, in MRI. And that's where I learned the physics so I was really lucky to be with the fellows there to do that. And that was one of my courses. And then the other ones I had to do to complete my bachelor's. And then shortly thereafter, I was involved in a lot of research at Emory as a tech. And then I went with Phillips Healthcare, which was great to be part um, of a large, uh, fantastic organization and company for almost 12 years in multiple positions, starting out as an application specialist. And then I started speaking and doing the courses. That's actually how Bill and I met up. Um, I was transitioning into a leadership role and I needed someone to do the courses. And so um, I, you know, that's how we met. I hired him to take over and do the courses. And um, then once I left Phillips, I went on faculty at Emory uh, for the School of Medicine, leading the MR um, bachelor's degree program. And um, I was back in Atlanta and Bill's in Chattanooga. And he said, why don't we start doing work together? And today we are business partners delivering education that we used to deliver together sometimes in, um, uh, for Phillips. And um, now we spend a lot of time educating in a lot of areas. But one of the biggest right now, our biggest focus is probably on MR safety. So that's my story. Neil, what, well, one of the things I have to tell you, Neil, I don't, I think I've ever told you this, but <laughs> when when I was working up at when I was doing these courses for Phillips, I'd I'd wind up there. I would be up there for uh, about a week at a time, at least once a month. Sometimes it was a couple times a month, depending on what was going on. And uh, right about that time, uh, Kristen and Michael got <laughs> married, and Kristen started having babies, and and they were, you know, I mean, every time I was up there. 
you know, Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio, which is where this was, uh, you know, especially in the winter time, you know, I mean, it's kind of like kind of miserable, uh, quite honestly, <laughs> you don't really get out much anyway. So I just, I just happened to notice that she seemed to be pregnant every time I was up there. And I, I remember I asked her one time, I said, just, just how long is your gestational period? <laughs> it just seemed to be. I was pregnant for three years. I literally had three (laughs) kids under the age of four at one point. And so, um, yes, he did pick on me because I was waddling down the hall for three years. But, you know, um, here we stand today as very good friends. I I forgave him for that. But there's not much else to do in Cleveland in the wintertime. Let's just say, you know, (laughs) I won't go too too much further with that. Um, But, you know, maybe we should look at talking about... Um, Now that we've gotten everyone's kind of background and we've been very honest about that, I think they're all great stories, but maybe we should talk about some of the offerings that, um, you know, Bill, you and I have with William Faulkner and Associates. And then, Neil, you know, we'd love to hear from you. Neil, I I mean, who wants to go first? Bill, what do you think? Well, I'll I'll go ahead and get it out of the way. And then you and I talk to them and listen to Neil because I know we've got some questions we want to ask about that. Absolutely. So uh, just briefly, if you uh, go to uh, www.t2star.com, uh, it was the only back in the days in the 80s, it was the first, uh, when internet was getting started, that was the only domain name I could come up with or get that was uh, MR related. So anyway, but you have to spell it out if you don't know, t2star.com. And, and the main offerings we have there uh, do an MR registry review. In fact, I've got one next week. Been doing that one actually since in the nineties, uh, except maybe for a couple of year hiatus when I had a, had a different real job, but uh, you know, it's a three and a half, four day course uh, focusing on how to pass the registry exam. And we also do a two day CT registry course. In fact, we got one coming up uh, this weekend. Uh, Will Redinger uh, out of Pennsylvania does that one, and uh, great, uh, great instructor. And we've got some other courses. Let, let Kristen tell you about the other stuff that we've got. Yeah, absolutely. So we also have some online programs that are available. And um, if you click, if you go to the www.t2star.com. Um, then you can actually click on the links and we have an MR safety level one and level two that you could, it's going to take you to the Northwest Imaging Forums website. They're available there. And then we also have, which I think is really critical for MR safety for non-MR personnel, as well as first responders, because that's extremely important that first responders know how to react to a safety situation in the MR environment. And then our, our big baby <laughs> that we that we really are proud of, and we actually did one this week, um, is the MRSO MRMD course that we offer. And, and what that does is it really teaches you to be a, an effective um, MR safety officer and an effective MR medical director. And we have had great feedback. And one of the things that Bill and I changed is that it's we do it in person, which is fantastic. A lot of people learn better that way. But we have found a huge um, benefit, especially through COVID, to have it also be available just to do um, via simulcast. And so, um, you know, we had people in class this week, and then we had people doing it simulcast. We keep everyone very involved. In fact, we had we had one guy from uh, Arab Emir- Emiratus, or however you pronounce that, Abu Dhabi, I believe, is that. Oh wow! Country. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He was he was hilarious yeah. too. Um, I hope he hears all this because he was so he was actually so funny. And I kept saying, OK, we're going to take an hour lunch break. OK, it's midnight there for you. And he was, <laughs> you know, it was just it was just a really interesting. Yeah, but- I think I think by the time the court when the, when we get through at the end of the day, which was about five o'clock or something like that, for him, it was like literally like two in the morning. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. he was there the whole time. And so. You know, all of our courses are pretty much, um, they're live as well as done simulcast. I know Bill does that with his registry review yeah, as well. Yeah, I forgot to, forgot to mention that. That's but yeah, what I'm any, here for. That's why I we're have. a good team. Any, um, any of our courses, we do that. 
And then some are just online, the videos that I just mentioned. So um, again, there's links all over there that take you to different areas and different opportunities at that website, um, t2star.com. And um, we would love for you to visit that. And I think we also have to mention that we do in-person mitigation and risk assessments for MR safety. And Bill and I have been traveling for I don't know how many years and how many, I really don't know how many hospitals that we've gone in and just really, we observe and we help, and then we give a very detailed, long report on different types of recommendations for safety and how to try to eliminate the risk involved based upon their their sighting, based upon you know staffing, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Lots of questions for Neil where that's concerned. And um, the feedback has been fantastic as far as the positive changes. I think Bill and I feel like we're doing a great service. And um, I think on the other side, I think they're really happy to be able to, to give that feedback. And um, it's been just a pleasure and we, we continue to do them to this day. So that's another thing that we're, I think we're both really proud of. That's all. Well, yeah. It, one last thing before we move off of this. And like I said, we've got some really, Neil's got a really interesting uh, and, and different pathway here regarding education. And I think what we're going to want you to see over the course of this podcast is that there's there's a lot of opportunities. And, and one last thing I wanted to say, uh, it brought to mind talking about the MR safety uh, officer course. It, it's, it's not just for those people who are going to be functioning in the role of an MR safety officer. Quite honestly, it's information that every technologist should know. We've had a lot of feedback from people that basically say that. that this is this is what every technologist should, should know. Because if you think about it, uh, you're, you know, you've got a patient on the table a, with a sophisticated technology here, and it's very important to know how to do that safely. Uh, the, the data from the FDA clearly shows that uh, – incidents still occur. Uh, and uh, the more people know, then the better off that is. So, uh, g you know, while our focus is primarily like on the the live specialty type programs, registry reviews, safety officer training, safety training, level one, level two, uh, whether we do that video or live or virtual with people, Neil has got a really interesting uh, career here that he's built with Pulse Radiology. So, so Neil, give us some more detail about, again, because it's, it's totally, it's, it's a different type of offering, mm -hmm. more so than what uh, we just described. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and, and Bill, I think you just hit it. You had, you, you know, you had one keyword there that was opportunity. And I think that's going to be a, you know, a centerpiece for this conversation. Um, I always think that opportunity is always available in radiology. I think when I first came out, you know, yes, your baseline, you know, your entry into the field, this amazing field of ours is x-ray, right? Plain film, radiographs, um, mm -hmm. you know, C arms, you know, portables, et cetera. So the best piece of this whole field is that you have so many different avenues that you can go down, whether it's MR, CT, mammography, you know, you can go, uh, you know, interventional, whatever you whatever your heart desires, right? Um, and when you see opportunity, I think that right now is probably the, the biggest point in all of our careers for opportunity. Um, I think COVID yeah. really kind of, you know, put us in a tough place last year, but I think, you know, 2021 and 2021 into 2022 and beyond, um, we're going to get sort of the fruits from that, from that situation, right. Where, you know, it is wide open for all of us right now, I think for many, many years. Um, and if you look on every single street corner and I say this all the time, there's MRI units going in, there's CAT scan units going in, there's more patients, there's more referrals, but no one has focused on, you know, the folks that are going to manage the ship, who's going to run the scanners, who's going to run the mammography units, who's going to run the CT units. And that's really where we try to, you know, focus on, right? So, um, you know, we have met, you know, so many amazing technologists that have come through Pulse and, you know, some are not techs, some, you know, most are, but we get to know everybody and, you know, we have a, a, a customized career path for every single tech that we bring on at Pulse. Now, 
just talking about our programs that we offer. Um, Pulse Radiology is a online educator that offers on-site clinical training, you know, locally. So we have three programs currently that sort of are, are our bread and butter is MRI, structured education, CAT scan, structured education, mammography, structured education. And essentially what we do is we have a curriculum, a uh, very robust, very comprehensive curriculum, you know, with, with strong testing, you know, um, exercises to essentially have you prepared to take the registry and sit there confidently for it. So in theory, our entire curriculums, they all run along the same model or mold, like, like I like to say. So if you take an MRI program, it's just almost the same as taking the CT program and vice versa, where they run the same length of time, they run and hit the same types of content specific to that modality, of course. So in theory, our programs run along a university style course where, you know, and I'll kind of walk you through the model is week one is a syllabus overview, student expectations, what to expect at Pulse, so on and so forth. And then I always like to call it a bell curve in terms of difficultness um, in our programs. So starting from week two, um, you know, MRI program, we'll just kind of focus on that for this podcast. But um, patient care, you know, we always kind of poo poo that and think it's not important, but definitely very important, probably the most important, which is why it's first along with MRI safety. Week three is a, yep. Like, you know, like, like you guys always say, so week three is fundamentals of MRI physics. So kind of learning, you know, what happens to, you know, the hydrogen protons when it's within a magnetic field, so on and so forth. Week four, and, and, you know, we start kind of going up the bell curve, you know, where it's instrumentations of MRI. And I'll, I'll, war, I'll warn everyone fairly right now that uh, it might look like an easy uh, weekly module, but it's very, very difficult. And I do that on purpose. But I always say it's like taking off the shell of the MRI unit, going inside, seeing what, you know, the radio frequency systems look like, the gradient systems, the magnetic field, you know, what it looks like inside. Um, you know, why does it make the noises, so on and so forth. Week five is um, pulse sequence design. So I always like to compare it to musical notes, you know. So, you know, we have a T1, a T2, a gradient, you know, MPGR, whatever it may be, have different types of timing um, that results in different types of, of contrast. So you, I you know, kind of, mm -hmm. I was, I was going to say I have, a, have another really good one for you that re reminded me of uh, a, a physicist. Uh, I uh, was doing, I heard him doing a talk one time, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Max Amaro, and mm -hmm. he compared it to pulse sequence to uh, a recipe. And he was saying, you know, like if you want a certain flavor, <laughs> and, you know, in this case, image contrast or something right. like that, then you pick a recipe and think of a pulse sequence as a recipe. And then the ingredients, so the different parameters, or, you know, it would be the different ingredients and stuff. Just a really interesting, interesting way to look at it. And, and I think, I'll let you get back to it here, but I just at least put in my opinion mm -hmm. here, this sounds like a, you know, a great way, structured way for a technologist that wants to get into MRI to get you know, good quality education that's very, specific, you know, very current and very specific. Absolutely. And, you know, it's funny you say that. So like, yeah, exactly. The, the whole, um, quote unquote, the recipe we use for week six, you know, everything is a, you know, increasing ETL or TR or whatever it may be, matrix size. Um, it's almost like making like a pea soup, right? You know, you have bay leaf, you're not going to put so much bay leaf in whatever, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's a great analogy to use for MRI because we're always sort of balancing things, right? So, yep. um, again, it's a fantastic analogy to use, but, um, yeah, just kind of spinning through the rest of the course. Uh, so halfway is midterm, uh, week eight is almost special procedures, case space filling. And then we have three weeks of anatomy, uh, head, neck and spine, abdomen and chest, and then upper and lumbar extremities. Uh, we end the content of the program at week 12, MRI artifacts, you know, how to diagnose an artifact and essentially how to fix it. Uh, week 13 is a registry prep. Week 14 is mock registry. So, um, yeah, I think it's a, you know, like you said, Bill, we really focus on providing a structured, um, you know, comprehensive analysis of how to learn MRI, CAT scan, and MAMO. And then, you know, the big component here is, you know, let's just say we have John Doe in Denver, Colorado. He can take the course the same way someone in, you know, New York City can, you know, and train at two different centers at the same time. So that's sort of um, our business model from the get go was to create a really good, you know, educational piece and then have those folks take it from anywhere and train, you know, in their, 
you know, respective areas. So, so you work with a local facility to offer some, uh, you know, hands-on clinical training, right, for, mm-hmm. for these folks. Well, right. Because, you know, they, they're going to need it if they're going to sit for the uh, exam, <laughs> right, because you got exactly. to get the clinical hours, you know. See, I think it's, it's I think it's a great opportunity for you know. So for those of you listening, and you've got some friends that are asking, you know, well, how can I, you know, get into MRI? Uh, have them take a look at uh, Pulse uh, Radiology, and it's just uh, we're. And by the way, we're going to have website links to everything we've discussed. We're going to have those uh, links. Uh, on the MRI Cast webpage. Now, many of you probably get your podcast through Spotify or the Apple Podcast, you know, whatever program you use. But uh, to get to these links, uh, unless you've just copied them down from you know, as we've been talking, uh, but to get to these links, if you go to the MRICast.com, we're going to have these links there for our material as as well as uh, pulse radiology so so we'll be we'll be able to get those uh, get those to you so you know what I was gonna say is if you've got some friends that are wanting to know about how to break into the field uh, you know here's something they may want to may want to take a look at uh, there's there's all kinds of as we've just been discussing here there's all kinds of opportunities. Uh, for uh, technologists today, uh, and in fact, I've to Neil's point. I mean, he almost verbatim what I've always said to people when they've asked me. You know, well, my kid wants to, you know, get into something, you know, medicine. You know, what what about X ray? I think X ray is a great way. I would not do it any. I would not do it any differently. Um, I was an angiotech uh, back in those days in the 70s and 80s. We did a lot of diagnostic angio with a little bit of interventional, but interventional was just kind of starting getting started back then. But I loved angiography. I mean, it was that was just my thing. And I think if I had never gotten into MRI, I'd still probably be an angiotech. Right. But there's all so many ways that you can go. You can not only take clinical pathways, but then there's managerial pathways if that you know, if, if that's your liking, uh, my bachelor's degree is in management, but I always tell somebody I, I would have liked management if it hadn't been for people. But, you know, it just didn't seem to work for me. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, but there's there's management pathways and then you or you can go into um, uh, the industry, uh, such as what, you know, what Kristen did. Um go uh, I have a lot of people that work um, in in uh, you know in applications in advanced uh, with all the different manufacturers yeah like oh, some yeah. people There's... go you know the applications route and some people go the sales route and then I w- I never went the sales route I did applications I did beta testing um, and I was fortunate enough to be in Holland to do that and and get that experience and then I went into um you know, um, the, um, equipment management side of things. And then I went into people leadership with 23 direct reports and I did end up getting an MBA, um, which definitely helped me along with the leadership portion. And I actually really enjoyed that, um, which is opposite from Bill, maybe opposites attract here. Um, (laughs) But, you know, there's other ways to get into MRI that don't necessarily, you know, you don't have to start off with the two. If if you just love MRI, um, you know, when you go to x-ray school, you, you learn pretty much, you know, just very few parameters, KBP and, and mass, you know, the two KB, rule. I don't know. I never actually, I never <laughs> took an x-ray for pay. So I, you know, I, I really, I start. I was in MRI. Quincy, I'm going to ask you to recite that entire, uh, in, inversion, uh, <laughs> formula. you know, what? Yeah. I, I, I was just actually sitting here thinking she just said KVP. Wow. <laughs> I know First literally I never took an x-ray for pay because I literally did all my rotations through MR. So they got me for free. And then I would work in the evenings and I, I pretty, I think I made $7 an hour and I thought I was the richest person in the world. 
And um, then they hired me. Like I said, I was very fortunate and trained on the job and then went, went beyond that. But let's just say, you know, MR is truly just, it's my love. And um, I'm so proud to be a part of this educational process. And I think the positive impact that Bill and I do, and, and as well as you, Neil, and what you're offering. But, you know, what do you do if you just want to go directly into MRI? I mean, what are the yeah. options out there? Neil, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, Everyone always has this theory that you have to go to x-ray school to be an MRI tech. It's, you know, being that there's non-ionizing radiation in MRI, there is, there are other pathways to, you know, get to your goal of being, you know, an MRI technologist, an employed, gainfully employed MRI technologist. So um, there are, you know, what we're currently working on at Pulse Radiology and during COVID, we, you know, uh, well, pre-COVID, we had so many folks reach out to us that... We're just amazing people. And unfortunately, we could just couldn't help them because, you know, the main component of being a pulse radiology student is you have to be a registered ART technologist. So our team kind of started banging our heads together during COVID. And we said, you know, we need to like really try and help, you know, these folks that are would make amazing technologists and bring them and get them a way or a pathway to get their MRI goal complete. So what we did is uh, created Pulse Radiology Institute, okay? And it's not under the same umbrella. It's two separate entities. But Pulse Radiology Institute is, you know, it, we're on a mission to be the first online radiography school in the nation. So what we're doing is we based uh, our, our university, our online university in St. Augustine, Florida. Shout out to them. Uh, they've been very kind uh, to us uh, right there in, you know, South Jacksonville area. And what we're doing is creating, well, what we have done is created a associate's degree program for non-tax to enroll, get their associate's degree, and then come out registry eligible for a MRI registry. Once they pass that registry, we can then have them be gainfully employed. So right now, our first goal is this, you know, associate's degree primary pathway for MRI and then as the years go on, you know, what we're doing is taking market data and saying, what do folks need? You know, what are these large imaging centers, networks, um, you know, hospitals need? Okay. They need MRI techs. They need sonographers and they need mammographers. So, you know, that's kind of, if you, you know, kind of read between the lines there, that's kind of where we're going with um, Pulse Radiology Institute. So, Again, um, you know, I think that there are other pathways. So if there's a non-tech that's on here and they're just listening, they're saying, well, there's really nothing for me, you know, in terms of MRI, I guess that market's sort of cut off. It's not the answer. You know, there, there is another way to get into MRI and um, become gainfully employed and take your, you know, innate abilities of being amazing with patients and helping them through their diagnostic process. Um, by kind of going through another alternative primary pathway into MRI. You know, one of the things, one of the things that we talked about, and and I'd like to kind of, Neil, get you to introduce this thing. It's, it's, there's this thing that's called, and it happened, it's a COVID, you know, artifact or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's the huge need staffing shortage mm -hmm. that people are seeing right now. I mean, I've, I've heard it from, uh, in fact, the other day I was on the phone with a client uh, and they were talking about, you know, their MR safety needs and stuff. But she said, quite honestly, we have a huge staffing shortage mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. I had the same experience. I mean, there um, is a facility I spoke to probably about two or three weeks ago, and their full staffing model is fantastic because they need, um, I think it's about eight techs um, full time to cover the six days that they're open, and they're down to two techs. Right. And that is leaving them in a situation, a dire situation. When I spoke to them, they said, we need someone that is hired and working within two weeks, which we all know is impossible. Impossible. And I mean, it sounds like they're going to have, would have to even, you know, shut down that's services. That's what I mentioned. Mm -hmm. I said, is there a possibility here? You may have to shut down, not just reduce hours, but shut down. Right. And so there's got to be a solution for that. Well, for sure. I mean, you know... You know, when you really think back and say, if 
okay, yes, we feel bad for the imaging center profitability wise, they're shutting down scanners, but who's really being affected here are the patients, right? We might right. miss a cancer. We might miss a breast cancer if there's not properly staffed imaging centers, right? That's a shutting great point. Rooms, right? If we're shutting down rooms, there's less folks coming in, um, thus the higher chances of us missing something, right? Or not getting, you know, immediate care that they would normally need. So, uh, just going to throw a number out there, uh, you know, and introduce this concept of the great resignation that you can kind of turn on every news channel and hear that, um, you know, there are just folks that are just not willing to work right now. So the number is 4.3 million U.S. workers quit their jobs in August of 2021. Insane. Now, you know, obviously that does not necessarily mean they're all radiography, right? They're, they're not all in radiology. So, um, but you can, you know, from what I'm hearing from our partners and, you know, we're kind of on the front lines with them, you know, we're trying to help fill imaging centers. And it, again, it always goes back to the patient, right? So, um, you know, it's great opportunity. So there's so many pieces here to this puzzle. One is imaging centers need to stay open, right? Uh, two, technologists need jobs and three patients need to have proper care. So um, when we go back to opportunity, like, like Bill was saying, there is so much opportunity right now for us technologists. If you're an, a registered AERT tech, um, you should totally look into, you know, advancing your career, getting an MRI, CT or, or mammography, you know, credential. And, you know, what that allows you to do as well is in the future, instead of just being an x-ray tech, which there's nothing wrong with that, but you're able to diversify your chances of it at different jobs. So if you have just an RTR, you're only going to be able to apply for RTR positions. But if you have an advanced certification, you're now well diversified and have more ability to get better jobs. So that's kind and of that's that's and that's what I always recommend with regard to our MR safety officer course. Whether you know your MR safety officer at your facility or not, mm -hmm. uh, the American Board of Magnetic Resonance uh, Safety offers uh, credentialing for MR safety officers, and I think that's a great resume builder to Absolutely. add that uh, credential to your uh, to your name and to your to your resume, and especially with you know sites really needing technologist and, and if you've got an MRI technologist, but oh, wait, I'm also credentialed as an MR safety officer, then exactly. that site knows they're hiring a very highly qualified and educated individual. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the other things that comes up actually with regard to MR safety, and, and it's kind of interesting, in, in 2020, the ACR put out their manual on MR uh, safety. And in that manual in MR safety, they state that there shall be, uh, and that it's not that they recommend, they said there, there shall be, uh, two, a minimum of two. And here's the way they phrase it. And this is why a lot of people, I think, get confused about it. A minimum of two, uh, individuals, MR safety trained, uh, present anytime the MRI is being performed. And so a lot of people seem to think that, well, the ACR is saying you need to have two technologists. No, they don't say that. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you've got to have one technologist because somebody's got to scan. But Kristen and I have always, and I know, Neil, you are a fan of this as well for, for reasons uh, we talk about, mm -hmm. uh, for the MR technologist aid or whatever you want to call it, MR tech aid. Right. Um, because a tech extender, uh patient care tech, there are all kinds of different names for them. Uh, many years ago, that's way before COVID, but, but many years ago when my uh, daughter was uh, just getting out of high school, uh, she worked for one of the imaging centers here. It was the last imaging center group with which I had a real job, and we're still friends. And anyway, so they hired uh, Amber, and she was working as a, a tech aide uh, in MR, primarily MR, a little bit in CT, but MR. And they taught her how to position a breast patient uh, in the event that the technologist on duty was was a male. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it worked really well. I mean, you know, you teach people how to pad people appropriately, position them appropriately, dress them, screen them, uh, you know, how to prevent skin to skin contact, you, you know, things like this that if you're going to position somebody, essentially train them to what we, we would call today level two trained. And if you get someone well-trained, they can basically, they can do everything but scan. 
And that is a, in our opinion, a really cost effective, highly productive and safe staffing model. Agree. I'm agree. Sure I mean, y'all would agree, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the MRI tech aid, you know, it's, you know, it kind of goes back to, you know, MRI centers, they're, they're being built everywhere. There's a need for them. There's a need, you know, physicians, you know, even from the physician's office, they're writing more MRI scripts and there's just not enough techs, right? So um, these MRI tech aides are almost filling in to sort of be that, um, to reduce that turnover time, you know, uh, with the table, right? So you have a patient that's on the table on the MRI unit in zone four, and then you have a patient that's waiting. These MRI tech aides are, are, can be that intermediate where you don't need to go to school, you know, 20 months or 18 months to become an MRI tech. You know, but what you can do is get clinically, you know, you can come from the front desk from an administrative assistant position or any of those other um, front desk positions and kind of get, you know, into scrubs and, you know, man up and, you know, and become like a clinical, you know, a clinical piece to the puzzle. So I think that the MRI tech aid is definitely something that, you know, when we blink in three years down the line, there's going to be MRI tech aids in every imaging center, every hospital, because you, what we're expect, what, what patients expect and you know, speaking as a patient, you know, once before, I would love if, you know, I wasn't, you know, left alone all the time, you know, like, hey, I have a question, you know, the tech scanning, I can't interrupt him or her while she's, while he, him or her is scanning. So these MRI techs, aid, I think are going to be a pivotal piece in, you know, almost managing the site, being the boots on the ground. And I think that um, what we're, tr- you know, and Bill, I think you mentioned the MRI tech aid program that we're, that we have released is a program that's going to teach you, um, you know, how to, you know, position, how to landmark, um, you know, you're going to learn medical terms. And then, you know, most importantly, last but not least, is the level two uh, uh, personnel training that you guys are going to be offering, you know, at, uh, you know, with the uh, Pulse Radiology MRI Tech Aid program. You know, if you guys wanted to speak on that a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean, I again, going back to, uh, to the Tech Aid, and I, Kristen to speak to this because we've had several uh, instances where with sites that we've worked with, uh, I remember one time we were doing a safety audit at some place and they had a, a Tech Aid, uh, I forget what exactly they call that, their position there, but it's essentially an MR Tech Aid. And one of the things that we see from a safety standpoint that's, that's difficult is in any of the listeners out there who work alone uh, can attest to this. It's hard to keep your focus on the patient when you've got all this other crap going on around you that they expect you to do as well. And it makes it unsafe, quite honestly. And that this, this one facility, uh, they had, were undergoing, they were doing a really complex procedure. I don't know, it was general anesthesia and there was anesthesiologists, nursing in there, respiratory, all these non MRI people that make it very dangerous. And, you know, and typically if you're a tech and you, you got to handle this whole scenario, by yourself exactly. you're trying to watch what you're scanning and at the same time keeping an eye on these other people to make sure they don't do something you know unsafe and, and create a problem well they were using a tech aid essentially as a safety monitor and that tech aids her only job was to stand in there and watch people to keep them from putting crap in their pockets or bring it you know mm-hmm. doing something unsafe yeah and i don't know if kristen if you remember that or not it was i just thought well, i don't know if you tradition. remember the mri bouncer is what we call it yeah do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, so there was another one. Bill and There's I had to there. literally dress out in full scrubs. They they did everything perfectly at this very large institute, and uh, the largest one we've ever done the the risk um, uh, mitigation. And um, so we completely dressed out. We took a picture of ourselves because we looked like we we're in spacesuits. And we get to the door and there's this huge dude with his arms crossed sitting in a chair. When we're <laughs> going into this, it was an IRMR, I think, right? It was yeah. an interventional MR system. And so it was just like he was, he stopped us. He checked us. He did everything. <laughs> and I felt Hilarious. like he was going to ask me for my driver's license. And so, wow. you know, Make he sure was, you're an age. Yeah, it, it was, so we it. called him the MR balancer because he was not letting anyone in. And he was like, are you sure they're allowed to be in here? Are you positive? <laughs> right. And um, so we, we did get clearance finally to get into the room. Um, but um, yeah, definitely. It's good. To, it's good to have, uh, you know, the MR tech aides for so many reasons and, and they're trained, like Bill said, you know, when you look at the staffing model and the ACR manual on safety of 2020, the staffing model says, you know, two level two trained 
And many people misinterpret that and say it has to be two technologists. Well, financially, institutions struggle with that. So then the feedback that Bill and I get is I have to work alone. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they may have someone down the hall that's able to help them. But what if they're busy doing something else? Mm -hmm. So this is a fantastic solution to be able to have an MR tech aide that's trained to level two. And when you're trained to level two, that means that you have more people say, why would you? train a tech aid to level two. Well, first of all, they need to know about RF burns because they need to know how to pad a patient. They need to know about the gradient magnetic field because they need to know how to put the earplugs in correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to know about ferrous items and how to do appropriate ferromagnet detection and to make sure that they're dressed appropriately to go into the, to the scanner. So they can do that role because they're trained to that level and truly help out the, the technologist to be able to safely verbally and visually concentrate on the patient, which Neil, I love that you yeah. keep bringing everything back to the patient. Yeah. That's really what it is. I mean, it's, 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 if you can't do this safely, then, you know, and so for those of you listening and if, if the tech aid thing sounds like something in your site, you know, be interested in doing it. Of course you can, you know, get your own, but just keep in mind, uh, keep an eye on, uh, for the t2star.com website, pulse radiology website, because as, as Neil mentioned, uh, they are developing, uh, an MR tech aid, uh, training program. And we are honored to have been asked to, uh, you know, basically take care of the safety component for mm-hmm. that, uh, for yes, that training. Thank you so, so much, Neil. We really absolutely. appreciate, you, know, you guys, really, and, you guys are we're really excited <laughs> about that. So are we, so are we. Um, you know, I always say just that, that MRI tech aid program, uh, you know, it, Kristen was saying it just now, it's almost bifurcating the role. You're not, you know, diluting the role, but you're bifurcating it. So from a patient's perspective, they should have enhanced, you know, patient, you know, patient feeling, um, and also like enhanced MRI safety on site because now you have a tech whose original job was to focus on the patient 50% and technically 50% on the scan. But when you have an MRI tech aid on site, you have someone solely devoted to patient care and MRI safety. And then you have the technologist who's focused on of course, MRI safety, but more and, you know, you know, you know more focused on the technical piece, getting the diagnosis, right. right. You know, setting the plot lines correctly and ensuring that you're the quality of the exam and then being able to review the images to see if there's anything that's out of the ordinary that they need to immediately bring to the radiologist. I went to one facility and I said, you know, what are you doing this for? They're like, Oh, it's just this protocol. And I'm thinking, and I, they, they're, they had to turn patients around so quickly they, you know, they need that time to be able to concentrate as they're scanning to go through and look. So we can meet those needs. Just going right back to Neil's fantastic explanation. So we can, if we do see something abnormal, go ahead and address it immediately. But the techs are so um, just scattered because of all the responsibilities they're given that right. it's hard to to maintain that focus on the patient. It is. It is. Yeah, I, I I do. I think I think this is uh, I, you know I think we've covered a lot of stuff here mm-hmm. today. We we from techs to tech aides to all different programs. Again, um, we will have links to this on the MRI uh, Cast dot com webpage. Uh, you can certainly find links to uh, all of this with uh, t2star.com and at some point Pulse Radiology. Uh, Neil, uh, we want to thank you for taking time to sit with us today and, and have this conversation. My pleasure. I think we should do this again tomorrow, guys. I've just had so much fun. You well, know, I, I got, you know, I got to, <laughs> my wife's going to make me get the Christmas trees down tomorrow. If it's, if my time daughter's recording competing it. Um, in the elite finals for horseback riding. So yeah, I can't top um, that one. So, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, she, so I've got to do that. Um, but I, I will say this, um, when Bill's talking about the links for both t2star.com and pulse radiology, when you actually go to the page where you see the actual podcast where you would hit play, those links are actually going to be directly below that. And so that's where you would find the links that we're going to provide for you. 
And, um, you know, as always, it's a pleasure to work with you, Bill. I saw you two days ago, you know, I mean, (laughs) I just can't make it that long. And Neil, I'm so excited um, about what you're offering and and what we're going to be doing together. So I I just can't thank you. You're just fantastic. Thanks, guys. Ditto. And um, hopefully I get to see you guys soon. You know, it's just podcast is great, but it's better to see you guys in person. Oh, Oh, yeah, that's really sweet. (laughs) Absolutely. All right. Well, folks, we really appreciate you taking the time to listen to this episode of MRI Cast. Again, this was sponsored by Northwest Imaging Forum's William Faulkner Associates and Pulse Radiology. So that'll pretty much uh, bring us to the end of this. I hope everyone has a great rest of your day, unless you've got some other plans. We're done. We're out of here. So you're just going to have to get over it. Take care. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.